Disclaimer, this training may include content that is graphic and sensitive in nature. It may be triggering at times and make it difficult for you to participate. If you feel the need to excuse yourself, feel free to leave the room or take a break. Individuals such as those who've experienced a personal trauma that includes sex assault may reach out to the installation Sapper office to complete this training in a private setting to avoid furthering trauma or diminishing of emotional well-being. Remember, even if you don't have a personal experience, someone in this room might. For purposes of this training, the term victim will be used to align with policies. Statements should be respectful at all times. Please refrain from disclosing a sexual assault in this training so individual reporting options are preserved. Mandatory reporters are likely present. The Sapper office is available 24-7 for anyone who needs assistance. Welcome. In this SAPR training, we will discuss definitions, reporting options, resources, and leadership's role in the prevention of sexual violence. My name is Rosemary Cornett, licensed clinical social worker, SARC at Homestead Air Reserve Base, and this is my personal introduction. Some fun facts about me. I'm a first-generation Latina from the Miami area. We are a dual military household. My husband is an Army E-8 and I am an Army O-4. I am a mother of three. I believe in the empowerment, resilience, and strength of the Sapper program. I dedicate my position to serve as the 42nd Fighter Wing SARC to my family, my brother, my sons, daughter, and future generations of military families to follow. I have this vision that we can one day raise our children to grow up in a world where sexual assault is no longer a taboo subject. You as senior leaders play a role in that future. Why is it important for leadership to understand the continuum of harm? Preventing sexual violence is imperative to the mission of the air and space forces. Sexual assault is a violation of our core values and of the Uniform Code of Military Justice, UCMJ. The continuum of harm describes a range of behaviors which could lead to sexual assault. These red dots behaviors start with inappropriate jokes, sexual gestures, sexual objectification, harassment, and inappropriate touching. When in any act listed in the continuum of harm is brought to leadership attention, members need to know they will be taken seriously. It is essential to hold members accountable to stop the behaviors listed earlier on in the continuum to establish a healthy climate and prevent escalation. Continually assess unit climate related to the continual um, harm. How can leadership continually assess the climate of their unit regarding sexual violence? Conduct out and abouts and talk to your personnel. Be enthusiastic about the deox and be aware of any biases that may be influencing how one interprets the results. Hold focus groups or gather feedback. What are the differences between sexual harassment and sexual assault? Sexual harassment, unwelcome advances, gestures, comments, or repeated requests that are sexual in nature. Harassment has an impact to an individual's career and or can cause a work environment to be uncomfortable or hostile. Sexual assault, intentional and unwanted sexual touching or attempts to touch of another person when that person does not give or is not capable of giving consent. This is a separate definition of training and education. It does not affect the definition of any offense under the UCMJ. Why is it important for leadership to address sexual harassment? Sexual harassment behaviors destroy unit culture and morale. Sexual harassment impacts members' ability to focus on the mission. It violates the person's sense of safety and belonging. How do you define consent? Consent, a freely given agreement to engage in sexual activities. 
This is a SAPR definition for training and education. It does not affect the definition of consent under the UCMJ. It is mutual between all parties involved. It must be obtained regardless of how a person is dressed or the past sexual history of or with that person. Consent cannot be given if someone is placed in a fear, threatened or incapable of giving consent. Some examples are saying yes, agreeing to sexual activity, having a discussion prior to and or during sex, giving permission before engaging in sex. What role does alcohol play in sexual violence? Alcohol does not cause sexual assault. Alcohol is a substance that may alter an individual's ind ability to consent. Some offenders use alcohol as a tool to manipulate people into sexual activity or as an excuse to justify their actions. An environment that promotes unhealthy drinking is more conducive to sexual violence. Some examples, alcohol can lower inhibitions. It clouds judgment. Alcohol can be used to purposely incapacitate someone. What can leadership do to positively influence the role of alcohol in the culture? Normalize only healthy alcohol use. Educate members on positive coping mechanisms. Know the signs of alcohol abuse and have resources available. Be clear that alcohol is never an excuse for perpetuating sexual violence. Next, we're going to be reviewing reporting options. Who is eligible to file a report of sexual assault with the SAPR office? Military, their eligible family members who are 18 years or older, and DOD civilian employees. Where the assault did not involve a long-term romantic or domestic partners, those reports should be made to a family advocacy program. For Air National Guard, members will report in accordance with the National Guard Bureau policy and guidance. What are the differences between a restricted and unrestricted report? Both reports may be received by a SARC, SAPR victim advocate, or healthcare personnel. Reports must be documented by signing a DD Form 2910 with a SARC or SAPR victim advocate. Restricted reports are kept confidential and neither command nor MCIO is notified by SAPR, DOD Safe Helpline, or Military Medical. Unrestricted reports trigger a notification of the assault to command authorities and to MCIO or appropriate law enforcement investigative agency, which may initiate an investigation. Both initiate support services. Additional supports like requesting an expedited transfer or are only available for unrestricted reports. Who may a victim speak with and maintain a restricted report? SARC, Victim Advocate, Chaplain Corps Personnel, Special Victims Council, Military Medical Provider, or Mental Health Providers. What is the difference between a disclosure and a report? A disclosure is the act of making a previously unknown sexual assault incident known. Victims can choose to disclose their assault to anyone, but need to be aware that disclosing to a mandated reporter may trigger an investigation. A report of sexual assault is the formal notification process to a government agency of the incident by electing to sign a DD Form 2910. Formally electing to report provides access to a variety of services for the victim. For example, disclosure is telling anyone. A report is official and creates an investigation. Who is a mandatory reporter and what must they do following a disclosure? Anyone in the victim's chain of command, for example, supervisors, supervisory chain, first sergeants, and commanders. Law enforcement, including security forces. Department of Air Force instructors, with the exception of USAFA instructors. If these mandatory reporters are told or hear about a sexual assault, they are required to disclose it to MCIO. 
What can personnel who are mandated reporters do to ensure personnel keep their options available? Be clear with their supervisees about their mandatory reporting role. If they suspect a person may disclose a sexual assault, recommend they stop them before the disclosure and offer to call or take them to the SAPR office. What is an independent investigation? Occurs when MCIO is investigating a sexual assault and the victim has not filed an unrestricted report with the SAPR office. A third party, such as a friend of a victim, witness to assault, etc., discloses the assault to a mandatory reporter. Personnel are not required to notify their commander or chain of command when reporting or speaking to the SAPR office. What are some reasons a victim of sexual assault may not feel comfortable reporting to their commander or chain of command? The assailant may be in the chain of command. Command has not been supportive of other victims. Someone in chain of command has made comments or jokes about sexual violence. Someone in chain of command has not intervened when a comment or joke about sexual violence was made. Where can victims go to disclose a sexual assault outside of their direct chain of command? The Sapper Office, Special Victims Council, DOD Safe Helpline, Chaplain Corps personnel, medical or mental health, MCIO or law enforcement, Inspector General, someone else they trust in the chain of command, or the next senior commanding officer. I want to highlight some details of a few of the resources that we just discussed. The Sexual Assault Forensic Exam, or SAFE, is the process of collecting medical forensic evidence of the assault. It can be done even if the assault was non-penetrative. The sooner the evidence is collected, the better. But even if a victim has showered, gone to the bathroom, or it has been a few days, there is still possible evidence that can be gathered. Members may also get tested for STIs, receive preventative medications for STIs and or pregnancy, and get tested for any injuries related to the assault. The CATCH program is open to members who have filed a restricted report. They can anonymously and confidentially provide information about the alleged offender and or the assault to the MCIO. If the information provided matches another entry, i.e. two different people identify the same offender, victims will be notified by the SARC and offered the opportunity to convert to an unrestricted report. The Special Victims Council, or SVC, are a confidential legal resource for victims. They educate victims on their rights, provide legal consult, and may represent a victim in a military court. Members can connect with an SVC through the SAPR office. Leadership plays a key role for victims in accessing which resources? Expedited transfers are requests made by the victim to the unit commander and approved or denied by the wing commander. Military protective orders and no contact orders are issued by the unit commander. Non-rated period requests are made to and approved or denied by the unit commander. Leadership should be made aware of any interactions with law enforcement. Leadership can advocate for access to services or resources on behalf of a victim. Victims of sexual violence have certain rights under the UCMJ related to their case. What are some of those rights? Treated with fairness and respect for their dignity and privacy. Be reasonably protected from the alleged offender. Express a preference on military or civilian prosecution. Provide input to the convening authority on the disposition. Receive notice of certain proceedings and events. Be present and heard at certain proceedings. Confer with the prosecutor and or trial counsel in the case. Receive restitution if available by law. Proceedings free from unreasonable delay. There's also the right to attend the hearings and or court trial. The right to feel safe. The right to testify. Victims also have the right to privacy. SAPA personnel, mental health, chaplain corps personnel, and SVCs all can maintain some degree of privileged communications with the victim about the assault. If a member has filed a report with SAPR, can the SARC or victim advocate talk about that case with leadership? 
If a restricted report has been filed, SAPR personnel cannot speak to the existence or details of that report. If an unrestricted report has been filed, SARCs and victim advocates can only disclose information that the victim has shared with them when they have written permission from the victim, when there is a danger to self or others, an example would be suicidal ideations, fitness to duty and or medical determination. This occurs if the sexual assault is the focus of the medical board and is on a need to know basis only, if subpoenaed by a judge. SAPA personnel are a very valuable resource for leadership, even though they cannot disclose specifics about a case or victim information. What is leadership's roles and responsibilities in supporting victims who report a sexual assault? Ensure victims' rights are protected and they are informed of all available resources. Commanders, supervisors, and managers at all levels are responsible for the effective implementation of the SAPR program and policy. Victims have the opportunity to communicate with the GFO regarding issues related to their military career that the victim believes are associated with the sexual assault. Responsible to establish a command climate of prevention that is focused on mutual respect and trust, recognizes and embraces diversity and the values and contribution of all its members. Supervisors in the victim's chain of command Officers and enlisted take appropriate measure to protect the victim from retaliation, reprisal, coercion, ostracism, and maltreatment when they become aware of allegations of retaliation, reprisal, ostracism, or maltreatment related to unrestricted and restricted reports of sexual assault. How can you support victims of sexual assault? Supportive words, continuously promoting messages that create a healthy climate in the unit. Communicating empathy and actively listening. Actions, take steps to ensure victim safety and emotional security. Work to prevent and address any retaliation. Can you describe the different forms of retaliation? Retaliation is when a member takes or threatens to take a negative personal action or wrongfully withholds or threatens to withhold a favorable personal action with the intent to retaliate against or discourage a person from reporting or planning to report a criminal offense or a protected communication. Retaliation includes reprisal, is taking or threatening to take an unfavorable personal action or withholding or threatening to withhold a favorable personal action related to the report of sexual assault. Ostracism is excluding a member from a previously accepted group or social presence after a member reports a sexual assault. Maltreatment is treatment by peers or by others that may be abusive or unnecessary and done with the intent to discourage reporting or do administration of justice and results in or could have caused physical or mental harm or suffering. What are some examples of retaliation for reporting sexual assault? Giving someone a bad enlisted performance report, EPR, related to protected communication. Giving someone a letter of counseling, LOC, or a letter of reprimand, LOR, related to protected communication being excluded from things, being made fun of or mocked. Who can experience retaliation for a report of sexual assault? Victims, bystanders, peers or friends, supervisors, support personnel including SARC, an advocate, or SVCs. What are the resources and reporting options available for someone experiencing retaliation? The SARC or Victim Advocate, Spect Special Victims Council, DOD Safe Helpline, MCIO, Commanders or Commander that is outside or higher up in the chain of command, IG Reprisal Only. What is leadership's role in preventing and responding to retaliation? Not engaging in behaviors that are retaliatory. Be aware of personal biases that may influence perceptions or decisions. Educating all members on identifying and preventing retaliation. 
What does responding to and coping with trauma look like in victims of sexual violence? Everyone copes with trauma differently, and other people react in ways that are different from what is expected. During the trauma, the brain is focused on freeze, fight, flee. And it often takes the brain a long time to recover from this. Freeze is a very common reaction during a sexual trauma. Some behaviors following sexual trauma includes addictions, isolation, withdrawing, difficulty focusing, sleep problems, increased feelings of depression and or anxiety. Some deny the trauma and continue with unhealthy or abusive relationships. How can our actions, words, and beliefs impact our interactions with victims and our perceptions, responses to allegations of sexual assault? Our biases, especially those that are gender-based, can affect our thoughts and behaviors towards sexual assault victims. Leadership needs to reinforce and engage intervention to prevent behaviors along the continuum of harm. How can we create an environment which champions prevention? Prevention includes increasing protective factors like setting norms that promote respect and creating a climate where sexual violence is less likely to happen. Three important norms that help reduce sexual violence. Sexual assault would not be tolerated. Properly address behaviors that fall along the continuum of harm. Everyone deserves to be treated with respect. Continually model and reinforce healthy behaviors and resilience. Everyone is expected to play a part in prevention. Leadership has an impact on all levels. Examine our personal biases related to sexual violence. Example, host active discussions about sexual violence, model healthy and respectful gender relations, promote SAPRO programs and advocacy, beware of all resources on and off base, ensure SAPRO has a positive presence in your unit. What is one thing you can do today or this week to help prevent sexual violence from occurring in your unit? Modeling and promoting effective bystander intervention skills. Seeking out education on the impacts of victim blaming and rape culture. Understanding the effects of gender-based biases. Be informed on the role of sexual trauma. Thank you for participating in today's training. I am happy to answer any questions you have. The SAPA office is the best resource for more information on sexual violence prevention and response. The SAPA office is located in building 346, room 100. The 24-7 hotline is 786-415-7272. Welcome. This suicide prevention training is one of the many prevention efforts occurring across the Air and Space Forces. Today, we will be focusing on the role of leadership in supporting connectedness and how your leadership is important for the prevention of suicide. We will discuss how to model responding to distress, practice how you can reinforce the ACE model to help someone in distress, including overcoming barriers, and how we can all be a part of a cultural change that supports help seeking and connectedness among airmen and guardians. I'm Veronica Sforza. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and I'm the Director of Psychological Health here at Homestead Air Reserve Base. I was born in Miami and joined the Air Force in 1982 and when I finished active duty I came back to Miami and joined the reserves here as a senior airman. I later retired from the reserves in 2016 as a major. Having grown up in the Air Force and specifically here at Homestead Air Reserve Base, I recognize that the idea of people seeking mental health has begun to be seen as positive, which is really important to our future. Helping our members find the help that they need and then later learning that they are feeling better, that they're doing better, helps me to see the importance of the DPH program and how it works. This topic may be difficult to discuss. Some of you may have had personal experiences with suicide and it may be difficult to participate. At any time, feel free 
take a few moments for, for self-care or ask for help if you feel that you need it or are having difficulty. We want open dialogue, but we also want to remain respectful of those around us. Even if you don't have a personal experience, someone in the room may. Statements should be respectful at all times. We're going to start by discussing connectedness. We use this word a lot, but what does connectedness mean to you? both as a leader and as an individual, and how can connectedness help to prevent suicide? The key content is that leadership-built connectedness helps prevent suicide or loss to suicide. Connectedness means that people feel a sense of belonging. We feel a sense of, of, of we, feel a se we feel that we're being seen and heard, and know that our fellow airmen and garden, guardians care about us and will be there for us. Active listening helps improve our connectedness, allows us to learn more about one another, recognizing changes in behavior, and builds successful teams. It provides support to one another. Some examples are belonging, mutual cooperation. Whole is more than the sum of its parts. When someone is struggling, we should acknowledge it and rally around them. Insulation versus isolation. Be thoughtful and willing to listen to each other. As a leader, we all would like to see a connected work center, and we can assist in creating that environment. Leaders are key to, to moving culture and cultural change forward. Our airmen and guardians look to us for direction and to set the example. We have a unique opportunity to model healthy coping skills by encouraging help seeking and promoting a cultural shift that, that is needed to, to, to prevent suicide. How do you model healthy coping strategies? Get to know your colleagues and your subordinates as individuals and discuss the helpful and healthy coping skills for stressors. Talk with subordinates and colleagues about how we address our stresses in a healthy way so it does not become distress. Changing the culture starts with genuinely caring about each other. For example, show that taking breaks and physical health are priorities. Greet them and regularly engage with the members from your unit. Talk about responsible alcohol consumption. Highlight the importance of seeking help. As a leader, how do you encourage help-seeking behaviors? Frequently talk about the available resources and support. Provide one-on-one -on -one support and encouragement to those who, pro who proactively seek help. Encourage our personnel to come to us, their, su their supervisors and other stressful persons if they are experiencing stressors or distress. Talk about your own challenges so that others are more willing to share their challenges and stressors. Seek help for yourselves. Some examples would be talking about resources during commander's call, reminding or encouraging our airmen and guardians to seek help early when possible, informally or formally. What impact do our actions and words have on help seeking? Leadership's perception, belief, and biases may affect reaching out for help. Your words or actions may also prevent someone from reaching out to us for help or, or may be a barrier for someone to access help, the help that they may need. Your language, action, and beliefs around suicide prevention, mental health, and help-seeking behaviors can have a profound impact or on whether or not a person actually seeks help. Some example responses would be, people may make assumptions about someone based on their stereotypes about an aspect or a per, or perceived aspect of that, of that identity. People may miss signs of distress based on biases or perceptions. Another example of how leaders can set the tone is by modeling and reinforcing the ACE model for those in distress. Sometimes we lose sight that this is not just a series of steps, but an ongoing fluid conversation. It may feel awkward while you're doing ACE, but it shows that compassion towards the person's well-being and demonstrates that you are there to help. How are you encouraging your airmen and guardians to use ACE? Encourage use of ACE. Ask, care, escort. 
Regularly reach out to our airmen and guardians and recognize the risk factors and warning signs of distress. Practice the ACE model. Educate our personnel about suicide prevention and intervention. Some examples would be, when doing a walk around, quiz your subordinates in the steps in ACE. Or you can hold a tabletop exercise as part of a staff meeting or include as part of an inspection or exercise. Another focus area of education that leaders can embrace is lethal means safety. In the Department of the Air Force, approximately 70% of suicide deaths involve personally owned firearms as their means. The Department of the Air Force has recently adopted SLOW as an enterprise-wide prevent prevention strategy. Use safes, locks, or store lethal means outside of the home. What is leadership's role in going slow? Regularly promote safe firearm storage, reinforce the availability and encourage the use of gun locks, encourage the safe storage of other lethal means, such as medications. Understand the importance of time-based prevention measures. We recognize that barriers exist for leaders discussing safe storage and lethal means safety. There is guidance about how to address these barriers, especially from two key resources, your local JA and time-based prevention public affairs guidance. How we prepare ourselves to deal with the aftermath should attempt should an attempt or death occur is called this, post-prevention. Post-prevention includes all the activities and responses by leadership following a death or suicide or attempted death by suicide. Has anyone dealt with this before? Was it an easy process? What was helpful or not helpful? In what ways can leaders provide postvention support? Allow opportunities for us and other people to discuss their pain or burden. Encourage airmen and guardians to talk about the loss, remember the person, and seek counseling for themselves as needed. Model emotional intelligence by sharing our own feelings of grief or pain in response to a death or suicide. Coping strategies and increasing resilience. Connect personnel with resources and utilize available post-prevention guides and checklists for leaders. An example, let personnel know that they are not alone. Tell and show that we are willing to talk with individuals about any challenges they may be facing. Develop a mutual agreed upon plan for reintegration following an attempt. Seek and model healthy coping strategies for grief. How can implementation of these efforts lead to the prevention of further suicides? Having lost someone you know to suicide is a risk factor for suicide. Example, responses that effectively and sensitively address a death by suicide facilitate the grieving process, stabilize the environment, and reduce the risk of future suicide. This concludes our senior leader training. Please review the attached for local and base resources. Should you need any of our help, please do not hesitate to call.